Want to speak real Korean from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Jaehui. Welcome back to Korean Top Words. In this video, we'll be checking out 10 ways to remember words. Let's see what we have. 노래를 듣고 가사를 외웁니다. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. Here we have the word meaning lyrics, which is 가사 in Korean. I think there are a huge number of Korean pop song fans, and for them, I think this is the first one that they've started when they studied Korean. 단어 읽기, 쓰기, 말하기를 여러 번 반복합니다. I use repetition, reading, writing, and speaking words over and over again. 단어 읽기, 쓰기, 말하기를 여러 번 반복합니다. I use repetition, reading, writing, and speaking words over and over again. I think doing something again and again is a very good way to memorize something, especially for languages. 사고 과정이 자연스러워지도록 한국어로 생각하려고 노력합니다. I try to think in Korean so it becomes natural to my thought process. 사고 과정이 자연스러워지도록 한국어로 생각하려고 합니다. I try to think in Korean so it becomes natural to my thought process. So just making sentences in the way of having subject, object verb, not like subject verb object in English, um, I think you can get used to um, that kind of structure of thinking so that you can speed up your language learning. 새로운 단어를 이야기, 게임이나 영화와 연관 짓습니다. I associate new words with stories, games, or movies. 새로운 단어를 이야기, 게임이나 영화와 연관 짓습니다. I associate new words with stories, games, and movies. When I was in elementary school, there was one movie that I really liked, which is the movie called The Net. I like the story, I like everything about the movie, so I was watching it again and again at home. 실제로 들을 수 있도록 단어를 큰 소리로 말합니다. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. 실제로 들을 수 있도록 단어를 큰 소리로 말합니다. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. So a learning language is kind of a combination of different abilities. Um, so I think it's important to say the words out loud when you study them. 원어민과 가능한 한 자주 말합니다. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. 원어민과 가능한 자주 말합니다. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. If you're in Korea, I think it's very easy to meet native speakers. It's because Korean people love to meet someone from outside Korea. 일상생활에서 그 언어를 사용하려고 노력합니다. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. 일상생활에서 그 언어를 사용하려고 노력합니다. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. In Korea, many people are saying that like, if you want to master language, you have to get married a uh, native speaker of that language because um, you can just use it almost every day. But not everyone can do that. So what I tried was to expose myself to the language as much as possible and repeat it. So for example, um, I try to listen the news in Japanese or news in English as much as I can do that on the subway, on the bus. 종종 어린 아이들을 위한 TV나 유튜브 동영상을 감상합니다. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. 종종 어린 아이들을 위한 TV나 유튜브 동영상을 감상합니다. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. And in Korea, um, there's one very popular animation which is called Bororo, different types of animals as main characters. And I believe you can find a clip of the animation on YouTube too. Or if you're in South Korea, you can easily you know, watch the program on TV. That program is for kids, but actually the stories are very interesting. 비록 상대방이 이해하지 못하더라도 가족이나 애완견과 대화를 하며 매일 꾸준히 연습합니다. I'm persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family or my dogs, even though they don't understand me. So no matter if your family doesn't understand the language that you're studying, I think you can just use just a little bit of that. And if they hear it again and again, they will get used to what you mean, like saying 사랑해, I love you, or 
Um, 다녀오세요. Please have a safe trip. 술자리를 가지세요. Have a casual drink. Especially in South Korea, I think that's the most efficient way to, you know, have a daily conversation with Korean people, having some drinks. So just make some casual gathering with drinks or with coffee is okay too. And just practice your Korean with native speakers. No matter how bad your Korean is or how many mistakes you make, you go through that and later, you know, you can improve your Korean. Okay, that's all 10 ways to remember words. If you have any tip to share, please leave comments below. Uh, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요. Korean? I was kind of feeling it like, can I just get a cookie? Oh! <laughs> Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, Read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. 
In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak real Korean from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Jae Hui. In this video, we will see top 15 favorite words chosen by fans. 귀염둥이, darling. So for example, he might say, 귀염둥이 오늘은 뭐 했어? Which means, oh, darling, what did you do today? When Korean people call their boy or girlfriend, they often use nicknames such as 귀염둥이, which means darling, cutie. So if you are adult, you can say that, but um, it's up to you. <laughs> 뚝배기 불고기, clay pot 불고기. So 불고기 is grilled marinated beef, uh, which you can find very easily in Korea. It's not spicy, um, it's sweet. So in the case, I can say, 저는 뚝배기 불고기를 불고기 중에서 가장 좋아합니다. Which means I like the clay pot 불고기 the most among all other types of 불고기. So when it's in the um, hot pot, it's so like, hot, so you have to be careful when you eat it because you might burn your tongue if you just eat many of the bulgogi at the same time. 마음에 들다, like. 마음에 들다, like. So 마음 means heart, um, and 들다 means to enter, to go into. So if you say 그 사람이 마음에 들다, that literally means that he comes into my heart. That's so lovely, right? So you can use this phrase when you want to say, I like someone, as a possible girlfriend or boyfriend. So you cannot say that 불고기가 마음에 들다 um, to mean I like 불고기 because you never want to be a girlfriend or boyfriend with 불고기. 좋아, like. So 좋아 um, is the verb meaning to like in general. So you can use it with anything. You can say I like kimchi, kimchi가 좋아. I like you, 너가 좋아. So anything, you can just say the object that you like and say 좋아 to say I like something. So for that reason, um, you can find the button 좋아요 on Facebook, which means like. 먹자, let's eat. 먹자, let's eat. In Korea, you might hear um, this phrase a lot, like almost every day. Like people will come to your desk and say something, something 먹자, let's eat something. So Korean people prefer having a big group lunch instead of having it alone. So before the lunch hour, we usually ask the other person like, um, 김치찌개 먹자, let's eat kimchi soup, or 김밥 먹자, let's eat seaweed rolls, or something like that. Or when you have your dish on the table, um, you can say 먹자, and then you can start eating it. 배고파, hungry. 배고파, hungry. So 배 means stomach, 고파 is kind of feeling hungry, feeling empty. So it literally means I feel empty in my stomach. When you feel really hungry, you can simply just say ah, 배고파. 
or in formal situation, you can say, ah, 배고파요. 봄비, spring rain. 봄비, spring rain. Yeah, people actually like this a lot. Like when it's raining in spring, there'll be a lot of flower around. It's kind of making you feel more romantic. So there are also many songs about 봄비, spring rain. Like when there's a spring rain, love comes to me or something like that. If you are becoming more romantic, you might want to say 봄비가 오면 연애를 하고 싶어집니다. Which means when there's a spring rain, I want to date someone. 사랑해요. I love you. 사랑해요. I love you. Practice it now so that you can use it at the right timing. So simply you can just say 사랑해요 to say I love you or more casually 사랑해 to say I love you. 시끄러워. Noisy. 시끄러워. Noisy. 시끄러워. <laughs> so let's say you're studying at a library and someone is making some noise. And then you hear that. Then you can say 시끄러워. Like to yourself, saying it's noisy. 안녕하세요. Hello. So this is a very common phrase to say hello for the greeting. Um, so when you meet someone, you can simply say 안녕하세요. If you want to be a little bit more casual, you can say 안녕. 어떻게? What am I going to do? 어떻게? What am I going to do? I like this phrase a lot because, you know, um, when I don't know what to do, I just simply say that a lot. When you're talking to yourself, you can say, "Ah, 아, 어떻게? 어떡하지? 어떻게? 어떡하지? What should I do? What am I going to do?" 예뻐요, pretty. 예뻐요, pretty. So 예뻐요 can be used only when you talk about women, girls, and um, when you see someone for the first time and you feel like she is pretty, you can also say, "Ah, 예뻐요, 예쁘세요," which means you are pretty, you are beautiful. And also you can talk about other clothes or object with this one, 예뻐요. 자기야, sweetie. 자기야, sweetie. So if I have to choose 귀염둥이 and 자기야, I'll go with 자기야 because 자기야 can be used in almost all the generations. It's okay to say that in public. 귀염둥이 might be a little bit... Mm, <laughs> but 자기야 should be okay. 자기야, 오늘 김치찌개 먹자. Which means, sweetie, let's have some kimchi soup. 자기야 오늘 뭐 하고 싶어? Which means, sweetie, what do you want to do today? 진짜? Real? Really? So, 진짜 is the adverb meaning real, uh, but we use it alone to mean really. So, when we hear something a little bit surprising, we say, 진짜? Really? Even if something is not surprising, we also say that a lot. So you just say that, I went to movie theater yesterday and I will just say, 진짜? Really? It doesn't mean that I don't trust you. It's just like common reaction um, to show that I'm interested in the topic. 배불러. I'm full. We eat a lot. Um, I eat a lot too. <laughs> so I often use that after I have a dinner. I say, ah, 배불러. 배 means stomach. 불러 means to be full, so it literally means my stomach is full. So you can say, 아, 배불러서 더 이상 못 걷겠어, which means I cannot walk anymore because I feel full. So that's all top 15 favorite words chosen by fans. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. 
Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Hi everyone, I'm Jaehui, the product manager of koreanclass101.com. Welcome to Weekly Words. I'm going to introduce some words in Korean. Actually, I haven't seen them yet, so I'm kind of excited to see what kind of words I'm going to see. Okay, the first word is 슬픈. 슬픈. Um, it means sad, like um, you can say um, 그 영화는 슬픈 영화다, meaning like that movie is sad movie. And the next one would be 어려운, difficult. If you just start learning Korean, then you might say 한국어는, oh no, it's not good. <laughs> I have to motivate people. I want to say that uh, 한국어는 어려운 언어가 아닙니다, which means Korean is not difficult language. The next one will be... <laughs> I have to make a sample sentence with that. 못생긴, which means ugly. Um... Um... <laughs> Well, actually, it's not easy to make a sentence with this word um, because it mostly has to be with this, someone. Uh, but I might say, uh, 못생긴 친구가 예뻐졌다, which means um, one of my ugly friends become beautiful. <laughs> like, that happens a lot at my college. Like, they have sometimes get some plastic, plastic surgery and they just become beautiful. So I might say, 못생긴 친구가 예뻐졌다. Next one is 화난 which means angry. Um, 화난. 오늘 아침에 화난 일이 있었다. Like, 화난 일 is something like something um, making you angry. So um, that means like there was something make me angry this morning. <laughs> okay, the next one is 역겨운, um, which means disgusting. I think I never used this word in my life. <laughs> I can say, 내 친구는 역겨운 음식을 좋아한다, which means my friend uh, likes disgusting food. I might say 역겨운 about food, but I'll never say that to some person or something. Okay, that's all words for this week. I hope to see you next week. 안녕히 계세요. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Korean Weekly Words. <laughs> um, I'm Jaehui, and let's see what we have for this week. This week's theme is studying a language okay first one is 동사 which means verb there are a lot of verbs in korean so you can say 동사는 한국어를 배울 때 가장 어려운 부분입니다 which means verbs are the most difficult part when you study korean uh, next we have 반복하다 which means to repeat with the word you can say <laughs> then what did i say in korean with the word you can say 같은 단어를 계속해서 반복해서 말하면 쉽게 단어를 외울 수 있습니다. Which means if you repeat the word again and again, then you can remember the word very easily. Okay, next we have 읽다, which means to read. With the word, you can say 한국어를 잘하고 싶으면 어린이 책을 읽어보세요. Which means if you want to be fluent in Korean, then try to read children's book. You know, 어린이 책 means children's book, and um, you know even Korean children's book has very interesting stories, so you love that and you'll be able to improve your reading skills. Next we have 배우다, which means to learn. With the word, you can say 일본어를 알면 한국어를 배우기 쉽습니다, which means if you know Japanese, learning Korean is much easier. There are many things similar to each other. Next we have 언어, which means language. Well, like if your friend is speaking, you know, different languages fluently, then you can say, Oh, no, 언어를 몇 개나 하는 거야? Which means, hey you, how many languages do you speak? You know, oh no is something like, hey you, and oh no means language. Different spelling, but the same pronunciation. And, okay, that's all we have for this week. I'll see you next week. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요.
Want to speak real Korean from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Jaehui. In this video, we'll see top 10 hardest words to pronounce. 경찰청, police department. 경찰청, police department. So I think it's because CH sound like when it's placed next to each other, I think it's going to make the word not easy to pronounce. 경찰청, 경찰청. And it also has 이응, 응 sound at the end of each character. So 경찰청. 경찰청 청창살은 왜 청창살이냐? 쌀 청창살이냐? Something like that. 경찰청 철창살은 왜 철창살이냐? 쌍철찰상이냐? But you know, like Korean people also have the hard time to read this word correctly when it's in the middle of the sentence. 교통사고가 나서 경찰청에 갔습니다. Which means I had a car accident, so I went to the police department. 계획, plan. 계획, plan. I think when it has double vowel, like OE of 획, 획, it's not 획, it has to be 획. That is the one making this word not easy to pronounce. So make sure that you say 계획, 계획, not 계획. So with the word you can say 이번 여름에는 제주도에 갈 계획입니다. Which means this summer I have a plan to go to Jeju Island. 과일, fruit, 과일, fruit. This one also has the double vowel, 과, 과. So it's not 가, it should be 과, 고와, 과. So with the word, you can say 과일을 사러 경찰청 앞에 있는 슈퍼마켓에 갔습니다. Which means I went to a supermarket in front of the police department to buy fruits. 귀여운, cute. 귀여운, cute. It should be 귀, not 기. So 귀여운, 귀여운. So as a slang, we sometimes say 귀여운. Uh, instead of saying 귀, we say 기 to make it sound a little bit more cute. You know, when you talk in a formal situation, you have to make sure that you say 귀, not 기, 귀여운. And if you know the word 귀염둥이, which means darling or cutie, you can say 우리 귀염둥이는 정말 귀엽습니다, which means my darling is very cute. 똑똑한, smart. 똑똑한, smart. So let me give you three examples. 똑똑한, 똑똑한, 똑똑한. Can you see the differences? For Korean, it sounds totally different between each other. So, 똑똑한 has double du sound. So, make sure that you read it correctly. You might need to practice a little bit more and say 똑똑한, 똑똑한. You cannot say 똑똑한, you cannot say 똑똑한. You have to say 똑똑한. Don't worry if you cannot see the differences yet. You will master that if you watch Korean pronunciation series. So you can say, 내 동생은 매우 똑똑합니다, which means my younger brother is very smart. 맛있다, delicious. 맛있다, delicious. So um, it's okay because even some Korean people sometimes just by mistake say 맛있다, but actually the correct pronunciation is 맛있다. So you can say, 너가 만든 음식은 정말 맛있다. The food that you made are so delicious. You can say 남대문시장에 가면 맛있는 음식을 쉽게 먹을 수 있습니다. Which means when you go to 남대문 market, you can try delicious food easily. 사람, person. But it should be a little bit softer S sound and say 사람, 사람. So it shouldn't be 사람. So with the word, you can say 사람이 많은 곳에는 가고 싶지 않습니다. Which means I don't want to go to a crowded place. So crowded place in Korean can be said 사람이 많은 곳, which literally means the place which has a lot of people. And this word can be plural, so you can simply say 저는 똑똑한 사람을 좋아합니다, which means I like smart people. 사랑, love. 사랑, love. The same thing, like you have to say 사랑 with a softer S, not 사랑. Um, and make sure that you pronounce 응 sound um, correctly, 사랑, not 사랑, 사람, or something else. 사랑, 사랑. So you can say, 저는 사랑하는 사람이 생겼습니다, which means I recently got someone whom I love. And also you can say, 사랑하는 사람을 저는 귀염둥이라고 부릅니다, which means I call the someone whom I love as 귀염둥이. 일요일, Sunday. 일요일, Sunday. Okay, when the word has the same syllable at 
the beginning and at the end at the same time, it's not easy to pronounce. For example, 일요일, 일요일. If you read it syllable by syllable, you can say 일요일. But when you say it as a one word, you have to connect it together and say 일요일. So you can say 일요일에 경찰청에 갔습니다. On Sunday, I went to a police department. Or 일요일에 과일을 사러 슈퍼마켓에 갔습니다. Which means on Sunday, I went to a supermarket to buy fruits. 철창살, grill bar. 철창살, grill bar. Okay, that would be the hardest word that I also feel like it's not easy for me to pronounce. So 철창살, um, it also has two CH sounds. So um, it's, it should be not easy to pronounce. And especially this word, uh, we use the same long phrase to practice it with the 경찰청. So let me try that again. 경찰청 철창살은 왜 철창살이냐, 쌍철찰상이냐. And also we have another one with these words. For example, <laughs> 중앙철창살은 쌍철살이고 시청의 창살은 외찰살이다. But you know, I cannot also read it correctly. This is that much hard. So if you want to um, find the good tongue twister in Korean, this is the word that you can pick. Okay, that's all top 10 hardest words to pronounce. Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to subscribe. I will see you next time. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요. Hi everyone, I'm Jae Hui. Welcome back to Korean Top Words. In this video, we'll be talking about top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let's begin. 조심해, be careful. 조심해, be careful. Yeah, I think, yeah, you hear that um, not only from your parents, but almost from everyone. Like when you're about to do something very stupid or very like dangerous, then your friends or your parents might say that 조심해, be careful. 조용히 해. Be quiet. 조용히 해. Be quiet. I never heard this phrase in my life because I always like try to be quiet. Um, but like, you know, sometimes I feel like I want some parents say this 조용히 해 to their kids at a restaurant or at some theater because some parents just let their kids do whatever they want to do. So I sometimes want to say that for their parents like saying 조용히 해. Be quiet. 얌전히 있어, behave. 얌전히 있어, behave. So 얌전히 means something like not making trouble, like just being calm. And 있어 means just be like something. So it means something like, you know, do not make in trouble or like just be there as you are. 숙제해, do your homework. 숙제해, do your homework. So here we have the word 숙제, meaning homework. 해 is kind of the um, word meaning do something um, because 하다 is the verb meaning to do. Uh, if you just say noun plus 해, that means that do something. So for example, 공부해, do study. 숙제해, do your homework. Um, that kind of pattern. 가서 자, go to bed. 가서 자, go to bed. Uh, I heard this a lot when I was a kid because uh, when I was in elementary school, the internet was introduced to public and I got a chance to use that. Uh, I really liked it. So I, I remember I used it until 2 a.m. even when I was in elementary school. So I heard this phrase a lot. 가서 자, go to bed. 셋까지 센다. I'm going to count to three. 셋까지 센다. I'm going to count to three. I think it's a very common phrase that Korean parents use. Um, 셋까지 센다. 하나, 두, 셋. Or something like that. So, 셋 here means the number three. Um, so it literally means, um, okay, I'm going to count to three. 그만해. Stop. 그만해. Stop. So, 그만 here is the adverb meaning um, right there, like right at the edge or right there. And he means do. So it sounds something like don't do more than that. Like just, just stop there. Um, so if you're arguing with your parents and if you say something bad, then your parents might say 그만해. Or if you do, keep doing something stupid, then you might hear the phrase 그만해. 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. So here, 장난 means something like play, joke. So it literally means it's not a play, it's not a joke. If 
uh, your parents think you don't take their um, advice seriously, then they might say, 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. 당장 텔레비전 꺼. Turn the TV off now. 당장 텔레비전 꺼. Turn the TV off now. Um, I think this is kind of the old phrase because I have some friends who are married and they say that um, their kids really love watching something on YouTube. So right these days, they say that they have to, you know, say 당장 유튜브 그만 봐. Stop watching YouTube. Stop YouTube, literally. So I think, you know, more and more kids are getting very familiar with the smartphones, watching something on YouTube. So I think um, the phrase is also changing by that trend. 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? Um, I heard this phrase a lot because I just wanted to go to bed uh, right after doing something on the internet or watching TV. Um, so I often heard this phrase a lot. 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? Okay, we just learned top 10 phrases your parents always say. I hope um, you use some of them to your kids after you get married. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요.